We have this insidious notion that big, grand breakthrough ideas emerge from great thinking or big, giant plans and experimentation. But the truth is that big breakthrough ideas usually emerge from consistent, small experiments, failures, wins, and discoveries. Now, this is a story that's common to successful businesses across the board, like Google and Amazon and HP and Starbucks and Pixar, and successful individuals like Chris Rock, Beethoven, Edison, so individuals from all different walks of life. Rather than believing that we have to start with a big idea or plan a whole project out in advance, what we need to do is make a series of little bets about what might be a good direction and learn critical information from these little bets and experiments and failures and wins and go along, like figure it out along the way. So let me share with you four great success stories and how they emerged from little bets. So in 1972, HP came up with the HP 35 scientific calculator, their first ever scientific calculator, and they wanted to sell it to the market at $400 each. So they hired a market research firm to figure out if there was a market indeed for an HP calculator at a price point of $400. And the market research firm said, no, there is no need for such a scientific calculator in the market, and people are not going to be willing to pay for such uh, calculator. However, Bill Hewlett, the founder, said, well, let's just do a small run of 1,000 calculators and let's see if they sell. However, once they started selling, they were selling 1,000 calculators a day. So what Bill Hewlett had learned early on and was that not every experiment leads to a breakout success. In fact, at HP, only six out of 100 new HP products become breakout success. So HP makes 100 small bets and identifies the six winners, and then they make big bets. They bet big on these six winners. Once they know that this particular uh, calculator is going to be a hit in the market, they're going to spend a lot of money to produce it and market it and sell it. The key understanding we need to take away from HP is that in order to identify the winners, we need to place a lot of small bets. And once we identify a winner amongst all those little bets, we can bet big on the winner. Now let's talk about Pixar, the great animation studios. The way Pixar works is that they use a lot of prototypes. Their storyboards are their prototypes. That's how they quickly um, figure out, sketch out a, po a part of a story and then try to see if that works in the big scheme of things. In 1998, when they were producing A Bug's Life, they had 27,000 storyboards. In 2003, when they were creating Finding Nemo, they used 43,000 storyboards. In 2007, for the making of Ratatouille, they used 69,000 storyboards. And in 2008, for the making of Wally, -E, they used 98,000 storyboards. So what's the lesson here? The number of storyboards is constantly going up, as in the number of prototypes, the number of experiments they're running. Each storyboard is like an experiment. So number of experiments they're running has gone up tremendously with every movie and almost quadrupled between 1998 and 2008, between Bugs Life and Wall-E. And why are they doing that? You would assume that after all these years, they would have learned their lessons and they would have to uh, conduct fewer and fewer experiments, but that's not the case. Pixar understands something very profound, that they know they will be wrong. There's no question about it. And what they're saying is, let's just fail as fast as possible. Let's face fail quickly so that we can get to the answers quickly. Don't invest too many emotions in one failure or one success. The key is that we need to be, we need to do in order to be able to think rather than think in order to be able to do because discovery doesn't really happen in vacuum. And that is why doing things, however imperfectly at first, opens up our creativity and opens up to greater and greater endeavors in life. So the key lesson is we have to fail quickly in order to learn fast. We have to prototype and we have to experiment really fast in order to move fast in our business. Now let's talk about the story of Chris Rock, the great comedian. A lot of us would be inclined to believe that he just comes up with these great comedy routines sitting at his home and doesn't really need much practice, but that's not the case. In order to develop an hour-long performance, it takes him six months to a year of hard work. And how does he 
do this hard work? Well, he starts in small comedy theaters. He'll make appearances in comedy theaters around his home, and he'll show up unannounced and do his comedy routines in front of an audience, a small audience of 50 people, and he carries it with himself a notepad, constantly looking for feedback, constantly looking for when people laugh at his joke, when people laugh at him, when people laugh at, uh, or when people don't laugh at him, and when people don't laugh at the jokes, or when people snicker, or whatever it is. He's constantly looking for feedback. And what he finds is that most of his jokes fall flat in these preparation appearances and it's just painful to watch him sometimes go through that process and there's so many times that he might think that a joke is great but the audience might give him a lukewarm reaction while there are times when he might think that a joke is dud but that joke will bring the house down so he experiments he constantly experiments a lot and fails a lot so what chris rock is doing is very similar to what is done in agile software development processes what we do is actively seek out problems through the development process. We break down large year-long projects into small components and narrowly define problems. And then we basically we break down one-year marathons to one-week sprints. And as we complete these one-week sprints, we ship the product, we get feedback, and then we go back to the drawing board again to figure out what needs to be changed, what needs to be improved, what needs to be added, what needs to be deleted. That's exactly what Chris Rock is doing. And there is the key. We need to smallify. We need to seek out problems because these problems will give us a solution. These problems will move us forward. Now, let's talk about the story of Google. The founders, Page and Brain, they didn't even set out to create one of the greatest software companies in the world. They didn't even start out seeking to revolutionize the way we search. They were just collaborating with Stanford Digital Library, and their goal was to figure out how to prioritize library searches online. And their innovation was that the best way to prioritize information was to measure how many other citations refer to a source. Now, this, of course, became the backbone of Google as we know it today. But back in 1997, Page wanted to sell this technology to Excite for $1.6 million. But the CEO of Excite turned them down when they could not sell this technology at all. So in 1997, they decided to launch the, on their own company, Google. And after they launched the company for a while, they were just doing banner ads like everyone else. However, at one point while they were trying to figure out their perfect revenue model, they borrowed this idea of AdWords, auction-based ad placement on their search engine, and they borrowed this idea from Overture. And this idea alone doubled their revenue in three weeks, and Google became a runaway success. Now, as you might notice, this, the wins in case of Google came scattered, few and far between, because small wins do not emerge in a linear fashion. They cannot be predicted or planned, and you cannot just build on one another. They're scattered. You you have to think of uh, um, think of them like footholds. They allow us to learn and adapt as we go, and we adapt. We discover new strategies and plans through through an emergent process rather than a fully formulated plan before we begin. So we have to understand that small wins are really crucial in the long-term success of our project, and they will be scattered all around, but we've got to be able to use them as they come. So there you have it, some great ideas busting the myths of entrepreneurship from the book Little Pets. Now, if you are an early stage entrepreneur, I highly recommend this book. By the way, if you would like a PDF summary of the key points from the book, click right here or go to 2000books.com slash bonus to get the summary. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out this entrepreneurship playlist I have created for you because in this playlist, I have summarized some of the greatest entrepreneurship books ever written books in the field of marketing sales strategy entrepreneurship and a lot more summaries include books like good to great lean startup millionaire fast lane one page marketing plan crush it elon musk's biography jeff bezos's biography and a lot of other great books just like these so make sure to check it out